Dr. Obi, but you can call me Doc. I'm here to teach you about cancer. More than 300,000 women die from cervical cancer. That's one death every two minutes. 90% of these deaths occur in developing countries. All of these deaths are avoidable with the HPV vaccine. But a lack of basic education means the vaccine often isn't used, even when it's available. The Dr. Obi comic book encourages young people to talk with their families, friends, and medical providers about the HPV vaccine. With your help, we can make cervical cancer history. To learn more or donate, visit Global Oncology at globalonc.org. Well, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you warmly to our second Global Oncology virtual salon. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. It means so much. While 2020 has been an, a very tumultuous year for all of us, here at GO, we've been fortunate to continue the progress along with our partners to advance our mission of bringing the best in cancer care and prevention to people all over the world. We're excited to share some of these updates with you all, our supporters, new and old, and we hope that it inspires you to continue to get involved and support our work, if only by raising awareness about the important cause that we all care so much about. Over the next hour or so, we'll get to hear from frontline implementers and collaborators about GO's work in Nigeria, including those who helped to create GO's comic book, an innovative educational tool aimed at children and parents in West Africa, to teach them about cervical cancer, HPV, and vaccination against HPV. After some introductory remarks, we'll be showing a sneak peek of the Go comic book video, and then we'll return to our panelists for about a 25 minute discussion, followed by 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. We'll wrap up with a few closing remarks, and we'll be finishing up at the end of the hour. Throughout this event, we welcome you to write down your questions in the Q&A box, and we'll be sure to include those at our Q&A session at the end. Also, we're recording this event so that we can share it with our other supporters and collaborators who are unable to attend today. To start off, I want to share a welcome message from two of GO's collaborators in Nigeria who are serving as ambassadors of the Cervical Cancer Free Nigeria campaign. Senator Landre Tejuosho, and Dr. Zainab Bagudu. Hello, everybody. My name is Senator Larry Tejusho, Chair of the Legislative Initiative for Sustainable Development in Nigeria, as well as an ambassador for the Cervical Cancer Free Nigeria, or CCFN campaign. Hello, my name is Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu. I'm a pediatric consultant and founder of Medicaid Cancer Foundation as well as an ambassador for the Cervical Cancer Free Nigeria, or CCFN campaign. Global Oncology has been a key partner in helping to launch this important campaign, a grassroots initiative whose mission is to eradicate cervical cancer in Nigeria and ensure that no woman dies from this preventable disease. The prospective release of the HPV vaccine set for the coming year in Nigeria presents an important opportunity to raise awareness amongst children, parents, and the wider public about vaccine-preventable cancer, as well as the utilization of innovative educational tools like the Go Comic Book. I hope you enjoy Global Oncology's virtual salon event today and learn more about the progress we have made in Nigeria, as well as the work that remains to be done. I trust that you will be inspired and challenged to move and get involved in supporting these efforts. Only by working together can we succeed in advancing our collective mission of preventing cancer in my country and around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'll now offer a brief overview of GO's work in Nigeria to date before we show the GO comic book video and lead into the panel discussion. In 2018 and 2019, we convened a transnational interdisciplinary group of medical experts, public health professionals, graphic designers, and artists to produce the first GO comic book. 
In late 2019, we conducted a pilot distribution of the Coe comic book to 5,000 students from over a dozen schools in two states in Nigeria. In spring of 2020, given the COVID pandemic, it was clear that advancing our comic book distribution to in-person school events was going to be impossible for the coming months. Therefore, we convened a broader array of stakeholders and formed a planning committee called the Cervical Cancer Free Nigeria Campaign and altered our plan slightly to move into the multimedia space. We recruited CCFN campaign ambassadors and produced a Go Comic Book video, which will launch the CCSF, CCFN campaign and allow children, parents, teachers, and the wider public an opportunity to experience the Go comic in a new virtual format. We're very excited to premiere an abridged version of the Go comic book video for you all today, which will give you a taste of how we brought the comic book to life using Nigerian voice actors. Dr. OB Cancer Chronicles, Volume 1, Cervical Cancer and the HPV Vaccine, our story begins in Lagos, Nigeria. In this bustling city, we find three young people, Aisha, Nato, and Timmy. Did you guys see Black Panther yet? Yes, it was amazing. It was great to see an African superhero. It was good. What do you mean good? It was the best movie ever. Aisha, you look a little sad. Is everything okay? Well, not really. What's wrong? I found out my auntie has something called cervical cancer. No, that's terrible. Is she okay? Well, the doctor says she should be fine, but I'm worried I'm going to get it. Well, have you seen your auntie recently? Yes, she lives with us, but she mostly stays in her room. I mean, you can only get cancer if you touch somebody with cancer, right? No, I heard you can get cancer from bad juju. That is not right at all. Everyone knows that cancer is caused by sin. If you do something evil, bad things will happen to you like disease and sickness. My auntie isn't evil. She's so nice. Oh, excuse me, children. Oh, sorry to interrupt. But none of your ideas are correct. Says who? Well, I do. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Orisa Obi. However, you can call me Doc. It is important that you learn the truth about cancer and not just a bunch of nonsense. Okay, Doc. What can you tell us about cancer? I want to know too. Well, let me show you. I'll start from the beginning. Cellular reproduction is a normal process, allowing our tissues, organs, and body to be healthy. Cells must grow, divide, and die in a controlled and orderly way. But sometimes things go wrong and cells start dividing uncontrollably. This is what we call cancer. Cancer can start in any part of the body like the liver, breast, and colon. If it is not treated properly, cancer can spread from one part of the body to another. In this case, the person will become very sick and can die. Doc, what causes cancer though? Well, Aisha, different cancers have different causes. Some cancers are caused by toxins in the environment, like pollution. Other cancers are caused by lifestyle habits, like smoking tobacco and drinking alcohol. Some cancers are caused by genetic mutations that are inherited from your parents. But many cancers are caused by genetic mutations that just happen randomly, meaning we can't predict or prevent them. The important thing to know is that cancer is not caused by bad juju, a cause, sin, or personal failing. It is a disease caused by a person's biology. Well, Doc, can I get cancer from touching someone who has it? No, Timmy. While some cancers are caused by viruses that are contagious, you don't get cancer simply by touching someone. Doc, what causes cervical cancer? Ah, now that is a good question. Your auntie has that? Yes, though the doctor says she should be okay. That is great, Aisha. Although I am sure it is still hard on you. The good news is, if you take the proper precaution, there is almost no chance that you will ever get cervical cancer. How is that possible? Can you make sure we never get it too? Well, boys, first off, you can't get cervical cancer because it is a type of cancer that only affects girls and women. Boys and men don't have a cervix. 
dog and a girl. So how can you be so sure I won't get it? Well, Aisha, I've got a better idea. Instead of telling you, how about you children ask your parents for permission to come to my laboratory? And then I will show you. Welcome to my lab. Wow. Just one second. The program takes a bit to boot up. So thank you so much for joining us for that soft premiere of our video. Uh, it was directed by Joe Garrity, who is one of our panelists today. We'll now be transitioning to a panel discussion. I'll moderate the discussion for the first about 20 minutes. And thereafter, we invite you all to provide your questions so that we can have our panelists answer. Um, so welcome, Joe, Patrick, Chica, and Paulette. It's great to have you joining us. Um, Chica, we'll go ahead and start with you. Do you mind introducing yourself to all of us? Hi, my name is I am a, an assistant professor at UT Southwestern um, Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. Um, as you can probably learn from my name, I am Nigerian um, and have had a great interest in um, essentially giving back to Nigeria in any way possible. So I grew up in Nigeria. Um, I know the Nigerian culture pretty well, but I've been very fortunate and blessed to have had all my um, higher education done in the US. Um, and so when this opportunity came along for me to participate in um, a cervical cancer comic book that would essentially educate um, school aid children in Nigeria, I jumped at it. Um, my, one of my main clinical focuses is in treating cervical cancer patients here in the US. And so this was a great, um, a great experience and a great transition for me to work with the team on developing this um, comic book. Thank you so much, Chika. Uh, our next panelist is Paulette Ibeka. Uh, Paulette is based in Nigeria, so you'll notice we have a little bit of a delay. Uh, but Paulette, please uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this project and why. Sure, thanks, Ami. My name is Paulette Ibeka, as Ami mentioned. Um, I am um, stationed in Abuja. I work with the Clinton Health Access Initiative. Uh, in 2017, I was supporting our cancer program while also doubling um, to do some work on nutrition. And uh, I met Ami and the GO team um, as they were supporting CHAI and two institutions, two cancer institutions in Nigeria to um, improve their capacity and, and to work together to uh, learn to um, support patients. And so in that engagement, we learned that one of the needs was awareness and it was just, um, um, it, it was natural to then say, hey, you know, we're happy to support with this, to link um, the GO team um, and, you know, Stanford team, including Chica and the folks who are going to be providing technical support with those in country who could uh, provide in country context. And also as a Nigerian, it was, you know, I was glad to also provide support in wherever necessary. So we did the linkages and it was great to actually see a comic book that could, you know, easily educate children and be um, an opportunity to get to their parents as well. So that's how I got involved and in, I'm, I'm glad that we've come this far. Thank you, Paulette, and thank you especially for staying up so late at night to join us for this uh, presentation. Next, I'm going to introduce Joe. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved, and what your role is in the project. Thanks, Ami. Um, I'm Joe Garrity. I'm a filmmaker based in California, and uh, my brother, Phil Garrity, has worked with Go for a while, um, and he approached me to help translate this hard comic book that you guys created into an animatic. Um, so with the help of um, collaborators in Nigeria, we've combined uh, Nigerian voice actors with um, the, the comic book material and um, we're still in progress on the full, um, the, the, the full volume. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Great, thank you, Phil. Um, next, let's hear from Patrick Domingo. You're muted. Hi, Ami. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, Ami, thank you so much for all the work you and the GO team are doing. Uh, and thank you for having me. Um, 
It's really a pleasure. I'm really excited actually, because um, over this last few months, I've just seen you and your team display professionalism at, at the top of your game. So that's awesome. Um, I was born in Nigeria and I migrated to the United States 40 years ago. Uh, my family um, is from Lagos and uh, is well established and has lived in Lagos for 150 years. So uh, my family has been part of the transformation in Lagos and in Nigeria. Um, um, so um, uh, I, I have a really unique perspective. Uh, a few months ago, uh, my wife who works with Ami and Franklin uh, invited me to join her uh, uh, to a function that Go was hosting uh, in San Francisco. And, um, and of course, uh, she gave me a little background that um, after visiting, I realized that I had to join the team um, uh, because they were offering something so unique uh, and something that touched a little part of me that had been there for a long time. Uh, my wife uh, and I uh, have been very fortunate for the last uh, for the last thirty years, and recently we've been talking about giving back to Nigeria via um, healthcare. Um, so, in a nutshell, um, I uh, I approached Ami and uh, Franklin and um, offered my assistance uh, in every way possible. Um, um, and, 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 and as such, um, we, we haven't looked back. Uh, uh, it's been something that, um, that means a lot to me. Uh, 40 years ago, my father uh, uh, was in a state hospital in Lagos. And, um, and at the end of the uh, period, uh, because he was a civil servant, we did not pay a dime, I mean, a penny, after all this was all said and done. So uh, that always stuck to me as a chance, if ever possible, to give back in medicine. Uh, and as such, so um, this uh, has uh, provided itself. And, um, and I think um, we have um, achieved a lot in a sh short time. But um, there's more work to be done. Um, and I'm very, very excited for Go and, and the team and everyone who is a participant because um, I can tell you um, that healthcare has been tested in Nigeria. And um, this work that Go is doing provides an amazing opportunity um, for, for relief. So um, I am completely into this and I, I'm looking forward to, to what we do and what we can do in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your moving story with us, your amazing network with us. You've been a, an incredible partner. Um, so just to kick things off, you know, Chika, you're a physician, you're a scientist, you're an expert on cervical cancer. Can you give us a quick overview of the burden of cervical cancer, its causes and how we can prevent it? Yeah, so cervical cancer is one of those diseases that's overwhelm overwhelmingly um, prevalent in um, lower middle income countries. So around the world, there are about 500,000 cases of cervical cancer, and it's one of the leading causes of deaths um, in lower middle income countries. So um, in specifically in Nigeria, um, second to breast cancer, I would say that that's probably the leading cause of cancer amongst women in Nigeria. So it's a really... Um, it's a really deep um, rooted problem. Um, the interesting thing about cervical cancer is that majority, I would say upwards of 95% of cervical cancers have been linked to the HPV um, uh, human papilloma virus. And so it is one of the only cancers that we actually can prevent with the help of a vaccine. So cervical cancer, um, because it's caused by a virus is very immunogenic. And so if we can take advantage of um, uh, vaccine that's uh, available, we can actually get rid of it. 
the um, concern has been that vaccine uptake in um, low and middle income countries has not been quite as high, but we know um, in Western countries, we know that in the US and um, in countries in Europe and a, a number of um, African countries have actually um, taken up uh, the vaccine. Um, and we've seen a decrease in the amount of cervical cancer cases. And we've also seen a decrease in the cervical cancer deaths in places that have taken up the vaccine. So this is um, from being a clinician and being a scientist perspective, this is a cancer that has very um, significant, can have, this is a vaccine that can have very significant impact on the disease status. Thank you, Chika. Uh, so you've touched upon some important things. You know, this is going to be one of the first cancers that we can literally eradicate from this earth, not, not dissimilar to things like smallpox, diseases that were once terrible, but now we don't face anymore. Um, you spoke toward challenges around vaccine uptake, vaccine hesitancy. Um, Paulette, you and others at CHAI have done amazing work in the realm of vaccination. Can you speak a little bit to the, the cultural and linguistic and other challenges that are likely to be faced in the, in the realm of vaccine? Sure, thanks, Amy, for that question. So yes, so Clinton Health Access Chai, we've um, partnered very closely with the Federal Ministry of Health and with the um, Nigeria Primary Healthcare Board, especially because PHCs are typically the closest um, healthcare facilities to patients. And also there are other campaigns, massive campaigns that typically go door to door and, you know, and like week long child health, maternal health um, campaigns. And so those are usually mechanisms which we use to um, disseminate uh, vaccines, but you still run into issues where um, both low literacy, um, lack of understanding, and also um, religious biases, um, and also some social biases affect, um, you know, populations and, and communities um, willingness to accept a vaccine. I mean, we've, we started the road to uh, polio eradication a long time ago, and we're only able to achieve that recently. Um, but again, one of the major areas where we had that helped with achieving that was being able to say, hey, there are key opinion leaders, there are people who are gatekeepers in the communities. And if you can get to them and explain and educate and encourage them to appreciate the value of a vaccine, then you, 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 know, you definitely start to see changes. So that would be what we would need to achieve. And that's why the Go Comic Book is fantastic. It's starting early to educate both children to demand it and their caregivers to, to understand it now, such that once it becomes available in the public sector, um, we can hope that um, uptake will be high because there's little to no resistance. Thank you so much for that, Paulette. And you've spoken to a lot of the issues that um, are really under our consideration. The HPV vaccine is set to become available hopefully in 2021 as per the Nigerian Cancer Control Plan. And leading up to that, it's critical that we, for example, partner with key opinion leaders to help educate the public and ensure that there is good uptake. Um, in fact, those introductory videos that you all saw are actually from two very vocal and well-trusted opinion leaders who have agreed to join us as part of this campaign. Um, but one thing that I've learned is, as a physician, as a scientist, as an academic, is that oftentimes people don't do things just because we think it's the right thing to do or because experts tell them that it's the right things to do. And, and I think that there's been a lot of public mistrust of science that we've seen not only in the, the Americas, but around the world. Um, so Joe, I'd love to hear from you your thoughts on this issue of public mistrust of science and medicine and what role art plays in trying to bridge that gap. That's a very interesting question. Um, I think um, like, like uh, has been spoken uh, to already, um, reaching people young is a, in a sort of indirect way. I mean, a comic book is not a necessarily a, a well-saturated market for um, spreading this type of information, um, but it's a really powerful tool to uh, sort of bypass people's hesitations or stigmas about um, these subjects and and the way that we that we treat them and and um, 
Uh, so I worked, um, one of the reasons that Phil, uh, my brother Phil came to me with this project was I worked at Pixar Animation Studios for uh, four years and a lot of our work in the editorial department is spent uh, working in black and white storyboards, um, putting temporary dialogue, music, sound effects, um, and creating a, creating a story much like the animatic that we're creating here. Um, and while I was there, uh, a movie called Inside Out was created, um, which, you know, I, I, I don't think necessarily at the outset, the goal was to um, start conversations about mental health and, and educate young people about the validity of their emotions, both positive and negative, um, or, or rather sort of dispelling those binaries. Um, but it was a it was an effect of 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 that film, and it, um, I I see similarities here with this project with the Go comic book video. That um, there's a lot of entry points for people young and old to appreciate this material, to even just enjoy it without um, necessarily uh, you know coming up against the the more challenging aspects of this, um, and, and it it disarms people, I think, to present discussions in the form of story and in the form of uh, artwork. Uh, I think it's a, it, it operates on a universal level that um, is really accessible to, to everyone. Thank you so much for that. And I, I totally agree. Stories are something that stick with us. Um, they, they touch us at a place that is very different than logical arguments. Um, so with that, you know, I wanted to come back to Chica for a moment. You were involved in this comic book project from the beginning. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about, you know, what you thought of this project when you first got involved and what that initial process was like? Yeah, so um, thanks for the question, Ani. Uh, I remember when we first, um, I think you had emailed me about this project. You had emailed me and a colleague um, uh, at Snapred to ask whether or not we would be interested in developing this um, in developing the content for a comic book. Um, and I remember the very first meetings, we were talking about who would be the audience, what would be the most appropriate audience, um, who can we really target. Um, and, and I remember those meetings, we, we um, had very um, spirited discussions um, that were very helpful in trying to decide if we, if we really wanted to educate people, um, knowing that cervical cancer is something that um, in the US, we vaccinate kids when you know they're about nine years old. We needed to target a, a much younger audience. Um, and so coming up, deciding that school-age children are probably the, um, the target audience that would, would be able to uptake this, um, as, this sort of material, but also be curious enough to want to share it with you know, their families, their caregivers, um, to have maximum input. Um, and so, going through the process of creating the content was was a lot of um actually it was very fun for me um and then meeting with as you mentioned at the beginning we met with um, graphic designers we met with public health experts um and having everyone's opinion um count and having everyone's input was 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 phenomenal and I, I would just like to say that I'm super super proud of like how far this comic book has come and um, seeing the video, because I hadn't seen that video, but seeing the video of the kids actually with the comic book and reading the comic book, it just makes you proud that um, you're making a difference in some some way or um, some some way, whether or not it's little, um, it is it, it's, it still has a huge impact. Absolutely, I, I've got to agree with you. It was such a fun thing. I think if I were to ask all of our panelists, did you ever think that you would be involved in something like this? I'm pretty sure all of our answer would be no, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's also one of the, the more interesting and exciting things that all of us have had the chance to do. Um, so with that, Paulette, I wanted to turn to you for a moment and ask you a little bit about the flip side of the coin. You know, Part of what we're trying to do here is prevent cancer. And for those of us who've had the opportunity to travel to places like Nigeria and see what cancer care is like for patients, we really understand how challenging it is. Um, so can you speak a little bit to what the state of cancer care is in Nigeria and why it is so critical that we step in the way and we prevent cancers when we can? Absolutely. Um, I think in 
low middle income countries like Nigeria, you see the impact of that phrase that prevention is better than cure um, because you have um, health centers that don't have the diagnostic capacities or health centers that are, you know, quote unquote, the apex centers and the radiotherapy machines are consistently, you know, broken down. Like the, the number of days of downtime is even much higher than when they're working. Um, you know, access to medicines can be a challenge. That's actually what I'm working on right now. I lead our team that's working to ensure access to um quality, low cost medicines that were um, part of a market shape, a global market shaping deal that um, the American Cancer Society and CHI were able to, to put together with key manufacturers. And so um, this program is so, this, this, this is so, um, it's also really dear to my heart also because I lost my dad to cancer and part of how that happened was a lot of mismanagement due to a lot of miseducation due to a lot of due to lack of education and lack of awareness right um and so if we can even if we can save the average family the challenges of having to go through diagnosis um, treatment palliative care whatever it may be that would be fantastic especially because you know we now have the situation where women who survived maternal death who survived maternal illnesses are now being killed by cervical cancer it's like it's almost like oh you 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 miss this bullet only to you know catch the other one which is something that we if we can especially you know like chica said it's it's incredibly preventable we you know like the comic book like the character in the comic book i really liked how she was like so how can i make sure i don't i don't get it and you know we, we see in the comic book that then the doctor is able to describe you know just getting a vaccine and you know i think of the the immense effort that has been put into um vaccine uptake and if we can add this on and, and just amplify the voice and make sure that we have you know young girls um uh, um, vaccinated. Granted, you know, unfortunately, those who have missed the the the, the uh, window, you know, we won't get them. But at least we can start to, you know, plan for a future generation that's not worrying about these things. And I have nieces now, so it's very dear to my heart that you know, once they get to nine, they, they can get these vaccines, and we're not worried about what cervical cancer is one last thing we have to worry about. You know, so yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. You know, your personal story, your personal passion for this. I think all of you at home can see why we are so lucky to have amazing, brilliant, move, moving, and um, hardworking partners like Paulette on the ground who really know the situation and know how to move the needle. But I totally agree. This is one thing that we don't have to worry about if we get it right. Um, so to get it right, what we need is, you know, connections and a way to actually infiltrate the media, legislature, et cetera. Um, Patrick, you've been critical in that process. Can you just speak to, you know, once you learned about this comic book, once you learned about this campaign, you know, what was going on in your mind in terms of the connections that needed to be made to make sure that this message was heard? Uh, I mean, thank you again. Uh, basically, well, in my private life, I'm a businessman and a serial entrepreneur. So my heart and my mind is always racing. And um, over the many years, but my wife and I could not really just put our fingers on one particular item that we know we could make a difference with. So on um, attending uh, the GO event in San Francisco, there was no doubt in my mind uh, because of my uh, business knowledge in Nigeria and worldwide that, um, that I knew what we had to do to take this to the next step. Um, and, um, and in a, a good way, I, because my family has lived in Lagos for 150 years um, and well-established, we have made lifelong friendships and connections. Um, I went to um, elementary school in Nigeria and high school in Nigeria. So I, I had a pretty good idea of the people who were 
connected and who we would need their help and resources. Uh, but I knew one thing that we had to get a few things right. But the best part of this was that Go had an amazing grassroots system in place. And I was so inspired by the grassroots organization you guys have in place. And that gave me a template as to, okay, this is what I need to do to bring things together. And everyone um, from you and Phil also knew what we had to do. So we started to put things together one by one at a time. And, and, uh, and as such, I started to make the phone calls when we were ready to, to approach people and, and, and add infrastructure or layers to help us to the next step or to the next level. And, and I have to say that, um, that, of course, I knew that a lot of these people were good people and a lot of them were committed to Nigeria. But the best part was we were coming in as, as, as a private entity. And as such, we had our own voice and our own power, which a lot of people don't have. So uh, on, on approaching people, everyone said yes. And, 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 and these are lifelong friends of 50 years who, who, of course, I could rely on and I trusted. And I knew they knew all the different issues, including healthcare and medicine. So um, in a nutshell, I think the, um, the, the work you and uh, Go team had lay, laid out, the grassroots, and now kind of bringing my own expertise as a businessman whose job is to always put deals together. I knew I had what it took to bring it together. And, and I believe we're just starting um, um, because I'm always amazed at what, what, we, what we have done and what we can do um, with more resources and, and more support. I, I think we can actually eradicate cervical cancer in Nigeria. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, this is just an amazing example of bringing your network, bringing your friends to the table. You know, Go has grown as an organization over the past eight years, thanks to people like you who've connected us to others who share our vision. Um, so I wanna turn to Joe uh, with a, a, a question about just the execution of this video. So one of the things that, you know, Patrick was very uh, humble, but he's connected us with, you know, TV executives, producers, famous actors, politicians, um, all kinds of people in Nigeria. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about how the process went to actually identify and tape the voice actors for this particular piece? Yes, um, well, I, I'll say that um, this was a, a really a group effort. Um, and uh, our, the, the, our collaborators in Nigeria really helped uh, in casting, uh, um, you know, booking time in a recording studio. Um, Phil and I were a part of it sort of virtually for, for a section of the recording session, but a lot of this work was done, um, you know, very uh, kind of grassroots um, in Nigeria. Uh, I think initially that that you know that the our expectations for this were um, you know even more modest, where we were just prepared to have even people double up on characters, record into their phones. You know, we were open to just putting this up on its uh, feet by any scale we could. Um, and I think it's really great that we have young people voicing these these characters now. Um, uh, you know, I think there's, there's a, a, of course, a balance between the amount of, um, you know, how much you can bring something to life given the materials. And here we're working from basically the artwork itself and the dialogue boxes. Beyond that, um, you know, perhaps in future iterations um, uh, of the Cancer Chronicles, there could be um, a bit more animation involved in, in this process. But right, right now, it's really just kind of, um, trying to let people read along and listen um, and, and let their eyes linger on the, the beautiful visuals you guys have created here um, uh, to, yeah, enjoy this story in a different way. 
Absolutely. Um, so, you know, a follow-up question related to that, you, you alluded to the fact that, you know, we're trying to create an experience for people that's a little bit different from the comic. Um, is music an important consideration for, for building this sort of animatic video? Um, and this is a question from one of our viewers. Yeah. Um, I, I would say it definitely is. I, again, you know, if story works on one level, music is even on a more fundamental level. That isn't something we notice all the time in movies and television, but is absolutely a powerful driver for how we interpret those things. Um, right now, we're using music that we may not be able to use once it's widely released online. It's what we call temp music. Um, but uh, um, you know, I was looking for a Nigerian artist just to just to put something in there to again um, build on the you know the uh, the authentic nature of these um, voice actors and uh, the the regional aspect of this campaign. Um, um, but yeah. Um, I think the first artist that I dropped in there is a is an album, uh, Tiwa Savage, that I discovered from 2020, and the other is a cover of a song um, from the 70s uh, from Nigeria, a, a, Atomic Bomb. Um, again, they're sort of just stand-ins right now for for uh, what could be, you know, a more nuanced uh, cues along the way to help guide us. Um, but yeah. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it evokes an emotion and a feeling of place and a feeling of connection, even for those of us who are from a different culture and background. And I think that's a really special thing. Um, it really helps us resonate with this. Um, so we have another question from um, one of our attendees. I'm going to direct this one to Paulette. Um, Paulette, uh, they, uh, they comment, wonderful collaborative work, clearly lots of time and effort involved. Curious if distribution and evaluation of this content's effect um, can be discussed further. Uh, but how do we evaluate? Sure. Um, so, I mean, before COVID hit, <laughs> the big plan, the plan was to distribute a bit wider. Um, but prior to the year starting late last year, we did a soft distribution in two cities, uh, actually two states, not just two cities, across a few um, um, secondary schools with the with children of the uh, of the population we're trying to reach, right? Um, and so at that point, you know, there were like simple survey questions. There were, um, you know, you know, just basically between a one and a five. What do you think about this? And um, the feedback we got from that small distribution was certainly yes, this is understandable. I get what I get what the community I get what the comic is trying to communicate. Um, we also got a yes. I I'd be happy to not just buy you know pick this up, but if I saw it at a grocery store, I might pick it up and pick up a copy for my for my friend. Um, from a teacher's perspective, um, they definitely also agreed that not only would they stand behind it, but they would also encourage the children to discuss the content with their families. Um, so that was like, uh, it was actually very qualitative. Like, you know, the assessment that we did was very qualitative. It was also small, again, because it was a soft launch because um, we were just trying to feel it out before doing like a, a, you know, a large distribution and then COVID hit. So, um, you know, what we could do is try to build in something similar as we try to launch this. Um, but, you know, even even just presenting a final copy and, and you know, at the workplace, folks were like, oh, wow, this is great. I would totally take this home. Um, I, I see this becoming the next way, you know, next you know, local Nigerian comic book. Um, there used to be a super old one. <laughs> um, there wasn't any in any way educational at all. It used to be called Ikebe Super, but <laughs> but everybody was like, this could totally be a better educated version of Ikebe Super. So um, I definitely think that 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 soft evaluation um, showed um, acceptability um, and and the ability for it to be an, an educational piece as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it is, it has been very interesting to see the results from that initial evaluation in terms of getting a sense of if and how this is having impact, especially since we're trying to kind of thread the needle here, you know, deliver education, but also deliver entertainment, try to achieve something that it can actually go viral and penetrate into communities. Um, so another question from the audience, this one I'm going to direct to Chica. 
um, how are the cartoons being dispersed into the community? Um, how, how might we achieve this well? Is a community or community or church leaders the right people to get to talk about this? Um, and, and how do we go beyond schools? We heard really nicely from Paulette that we've been you know, working within schools, first in person. Now we hope to be able to distribute the video through online school. But can you talk a little bit, Chica, to the role of you know, community leaders, church leaders, et cetera? Yeah, so um, that's a very interesting question. I think um, Nigeria is a very um, religious um, country. Um, and I think to be able to, to distribute any sort of information widely, you need those community leaders, you need those community organizers. They need to buy into the material that you're trying to distribute. So if you, um, you could reach a, a huge number of people of, of um, people and persons if you did it through um, churches or religious um, establishments. But the key is getting them to buy into it because once they bought into it, their congregation um, are very loyal in a sense. And so that's a huge audience you could reach. I think the way, the way Nigeria is set up right now, there are lots of things going on in Nigeria and Another group of people that I've seen amazing uptake of information from is young, young Nigerians through social media. Um, the amount of Nigerians that are on social media, communicating every day, exchanging ideas, exchanging information is vast. And I, I would say a little bit surprising to me, but, but, but also very exciting. The number of social media changes and moves that are happening right now with lots of different campaigns um, is, an, is another fantastic way to get to people. Um, so I think there's a certain group of people that you will reach um, through religious establishments and that's, but, but for you to do that, the, the, the leaders have to be engaged. Um, and then social media, I think is another way um, information is is getting is widely dispersed currently um, with, with in the current climate that we live that we live in. Great, thank you, thank you, and I I totally agree. I think I've been amazed at how social media is such a critical way to reach just a the younger age range especially. Um, so I think a multi pronged approach is really critical in this effort and honestly in any health related effort in this region. Um, so I'm going to um, lob the next question to Joe. I'm going to ask all of our panelists to think about, you know, what is your dream goal for this comic and this video and this campaign in the next year? So, you know, if we were to get together again at this time, 2021, what do you want to have achieved? Um, and my question to Joe, while you guys get to think about it, is do you personally have a goal for the percentage of Nigerian young people you want to reach with the comic book video? And this is a question from one of our attendees. Personal goal. Um, is 100 a cop out? Uh, I, I think that the, the benefit of you guys translating this, what is a wonderful physical document for people to take home. And if I was a kid, seeing those photos in the beginning of um, uh, the, the school children with their own copies. I think that's huge if it's possible to distribute this thing more widely. And Patrick obviously is um, knows a lot about your, uh, what it takes to do that, to get physical copies to people. But the power of this video is that through social media, like Chica has just talked about, uh, through online distribution, anyone in the country can see it at the, you know, um, just, by, just by sharing the link. Um, I would love to see if, if a campaign like this proves to be sex, successful and it, it really seems like it is and has the potential to go even um, broader is that it could be picked up as, as a proper animated program. Um, and you could see a more nuanced level of animation. I would love to see these characters actually, you know, not just in an animatic form where we're looking at still images, but, um, you know, really uh, an animated program. Absolutely, and I would love that. Love to see that as well. Um, you know, Joe has heard from previous conversations that the reason this all came to pass was many years ago. We had this kind of 
dream of having a Sesame Street character Muppet who had cancer so that we could teach children about cancer and, and familiarize themselves with uh, familiarize them with the disease and its treatment um, and to demystify this. This is you know not unprecedented. The South African version of, of uh, Sesame Street actually had a character with HIV AIDS back in the day. Um, so I, I totally agree that there, there are lots of opportunities moving forward and we just need to find the right partners to help us achieve that. Um, so really quickly, because we have very little time left, Chica, we meet again, November 11th, 2021. What have we achieved? Um, I would say that everyone that I know who lives in Nigeria has seen the video because everyone, if I can send it to everyone that I know and they see it, then many more people will have seen the video. Sounds good. Paulette, same question. Um, okay, so same thing that Chica said, but on top of that, that because of the, the video, people are actually like racing to the health facility to get the vaccine because it's dropping in 2021, right? So that, that's even better that we're celebrating November 11, 2021, that folks are getting it without hesitation because of the comic books um, and the video's ability to really educate them on the value, yeah. I love it. Run, don't walk to the vaccine. <laughs> Um, Patrick, same question. Wow. Look, um, I want uh, CCFN to become a household word. Um, that is vital. I want everyone, and considering the population of the youth today, and considering the fact that they are all mobile, I think and a population that's 200 million people. I believe if we have a quarter of those people well informed about the CCFN, then we've done a good job. Absolutely. So, you know, that's only 50 million people, five zero million people that we need to be, be aware about this campaign. And all of you who are listening, can help us. Um, our panelists have laid out some really aggressive, but I think achievable goals. And um, we want people to know about this. We want people to run, not walk to the vaccine. Um, Patrick, I'd like to ask you as we close, what is the greatest obstacle that you and the CCSF, CCFN team are facing in the effort to really achieve a cervical cancer-free Nigeria? And what do you uh. and the campaign need to succeed? We need more resources, more resources. Um, look, 200 million people, 500, over 500 different languages. And we need to reach people. We need resources. We need donations. We need sponsorships. We need everything that can help us reach people that we're targeting. Um, that is non-negotiable. We need your help. Um, we need the resources to, 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 to connect with people over social media, uh, over the videos, the comic books, and on and on. But um, we need your help. We need your donations. We need your, um, you, we need your support. We need your sponsorships. Uh, whichever way you can help. I think it will go a long way. Thank you so much. And you know, that's what we need. We just need everybody to come to the table. We can achieve this. Um, to give you a sense of what this organization can do with your gift, um, we can adapt volume one of the Go comic book for other cultural linguistic groups in Nigeria. You've heard from Patrick that there are many, many different languages that are spoken in Nigeria, many different cultures. We'd like to create new media products for TV, online, and radio. You've heard from Joe about how it would be great to actually get these characters to move in, in live animation. We'd like to adapt volume one of the Go comic book for other regions, such as East Africa. We've been in conversations with ACS and, and folks in the country of Kenya, um, also the Caribbean. We'd like to create volume two of the comic book, um, for instance, focused on breast cancer. 
In the bigger picture, an article from The Lancet earlier this year stated over the next century, successful implementation of the WHO elimination strategy would reduce cervical cancer mortality by 99% and save more than 62 million women's lives. Think about the thousands of young girls we've already reached and the millions more we hope to reach. Think about how we can ensure that none of them are lost to cervical cancer and that they have a bright future, that they can become mothers and leaders and professionals like the amazing Nigerian women leaders who are proudly serving as our campaign ambassadors. Dr. Bagudu, who you heard from earlier, Mrs. Tun Sonaya, Ms. Karo Omu, and Ms. Tino Eze. So before we close, we'd like to invite you to support Go's amazing work in Nigeria and beyond and allow us to continue to build on this amazing framework. Um, you can donate online at globalonc.org slash donate. Um, we pasted the URL into the Zoom chat and also paste, showed the URL on the screen. If your phone is accessible, you can also scan the QR code with your camera, which will directly take you to our donation page. You can participate in the No Boundaries campaign, which is an online peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign that invite pe invites people to share how they have been personally impacted by cancer and why they believe everyone, and I mean everyone, deserves access to good cancer care. We have many Go volunteers like the ones you've met today who have created their own fundraising pages, and you can help them reach their fundraising goals. All of the proceeds will go directly to help Go's year-end goal. We also have an anonymous donor who has made a $10,000 matching gift as a part of our end of year campaign. And so please help us to take advantage of this amazing opportunity. And lastly, to sweeten the deal, donors who give over $50 can opt to receive a Go t-shirt as pictured here. So in closing, I wanna thank everyone for your attendance and participation today. I hope you've been able to learn more about the impressive strides that Go is making to prevent cancer in Nigeria and beyond. If you're interested in learning more about our programs or volunteering, please email us at info at or check out our website. In closing, thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you to all of our panelists who have contributed tons of ideas, time, and passion to this project. I hope you're seeing what is possible in the tomorrow that we envision. And I sincerely hope that we can achieve our panelists' goals by November 11th, 2021. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.